second one, we're looking at a series of presentations, which this is the first of a series on causes of disease. And the, the primary thing is to understand acidosis. But in order to understand acidosis and stuff like it was absolutely necessary to go over what pH is so we can have a full understanding of pH, then we can go into the implication of, of pH on our health and then look at how this, um, the health issues and then we could take it from there and look at the, how we could make adjustments in order to maintain health through pH. Now our objective is to know what pH is, is to know how to measure pH and understand what is that to do with and we are going to hint on the relevance or the importance of maintaining acid and acid base balance in our, in our body. Now the first part of our presentation is what is pH and uh, we established pH is usually represented as pH in most things um, and in most cases you don't see an explanation of what it means and I'm just telling you that it means potential hydrogen and this is the equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions in anything that you're testing the pH of. Okay? Any form of substance solution you're testing the pH of. It is usually measured on a scale from 0 to 14. 0 um, on the scale 0 through to 6.5 is usually acidic and above 7, 8.5 is um, basic. Now we're going to look at a scale in a little bit. Now I just want to point out each number represents a tenfold difference and as we we move into the next segment, not today, we're going to really understand what the tenfold difference between the number above or below it. And uh, one thing I think is very interesting in, is, is that in our body it takes 20 times as much base to cancel out acid or to revert it to the normal um, pH that our body should be. And our blood pH is equivalent to it, or it should ideally be 7.365, somewhere there. And then things type is like uh, a 96 pH temperature of the body. And as I had said before, the body temperature impacts the pH because pH is, um, is um, the body enzyme itself is affected by temperature and if the enzyme there's a slight adjustment to the temperature it's going to affect the pH and the whole metabolic rate of the body is going to change and because that changes it's going to make adjustment to the pH so it's a domino effect that it really has on our body so if our body temperature elevates slightly, for example, if you have a fever, what do you think is going to happen? What, what, what effect does it have on... We're looking at pH, but what does effect would that have on the pH enzyme metabolic rate? If, so, okay, one person at a time. So is there something going on? You said... And um, why do you think that happens? And how does the temperature ricochet on the other things that cause it? Do we have any idea? Okay, so if we have an increase in temperature, in most cases, as a result of some form of infection within the body, and as a result of that, the pH will change. So if you have a bacterial infection, for example, bacteria are going to produce all of these waste inside of your body and the bacteria could only survive when the body is acidic in the first place. Uh, I don't really want to veer off into that for now but we get the picture of how it implicates our health. Okay, so a pH scale looks something like this and when we actually 
test some things that I wanted to do a little testing to see see the difference or how what the pH look like for some of the things that we use every day. So we have the scale from 1 to 14 and here on the scale it's given us an idea of some of the things that we use in our daily lives, what their pHs are. So we have gastric acid which is extremely acidic and by nature we were designed to have an acidic stomach. And um, lemon juice is acidic as well, orange juice is acidic, tomato juice is acidic, black coffee is acidic, and the urine. Um, ideally, the urine would, should fall somewhere between 6 and 7. So, one of the things that I would challenge us to do is to actually try to test our pH to see where we are. Just on a daily basis, we want to see where we are. We might not need to do it every day, but let's say once a week we get up and we do our, our pH at least three, four times a day to see what's the pH when we wake up in the morning, what happens to it after we eat, um, breakfast, and lunchtime again, and in the evening before we go to bed. It would be something to really know what our pH is because that will allude to our state, the state of our health. I mean, we talk about health every day and we try to eat healthy on a daily basis. But are we really eating food or healthy food or are our bodies really um, have a balanced pH as it should be, uh, as the blood should be 7.5? Three. So, uh, is that what our pHs are, or what what is that telling us about our state of health? Okay, so that is something that we would need to do. Um, sea water that is um, on the neutral side, baking soda, is also on. It's um, it's high in. It, it, it's very, it's a very high pH, and the higher the pH is, the the more alkaline or basic a substance is, and the lower the pH, the more acidic the substance is. Okay, and um, this is also, it's another scale, it kind of tells the same thing. Um, and this is another one, which is not very clear. Okay, and this, I cannot really see what is in this. The acidity of your blood is measured. By determining its pH, a lower pH means that your pH in your body, your blood is acidic, and a higher pH means that it's basic. The pH of your blood should be around 7.4, 7.5, as I said, ranges between 7.3 to 7.5, that would be okay. And this is what the American Association of Clinical Chemistry says it should be. Okay, and when we talk about, we talk a lot about, um, we talk a lot about being acidic, but there is also another thing to it. The um, alkalosis is also another condition that occurs within our body. So we become too alkaline from time to time. It's characterized by pH of 7.45 or higher. While seemingly slight, these numerical difference can be very severe and they could have serious implications. So if the pH is too high or it is too low, it will affect our health. So in an effort, a lot of times what will happen, people make a deliberate effort to alkalize their system. And, and sometimes they become, they over alkalize their system and it could also have serious implications. Acidosis, um, acidosis can be to numerous health issues as well as alkalosis, and they can be life threatening. Now, when your body becomes very acidic or are, are too alkaline, it changes the way the blood should appear. So when we look under the microscope and we look at your blood, the blood usually are round, you have them separated, they should not be um, 
attached to each other because the blood cells are negatively charged. And if you two put two negative forces together, these forces are going to repel. So our blood cells um, tells a lot about our health. So if our blood cells are coming together and they're stacking like a ruling, it means that the blood is acidic, even if you don't do a pH test. Now, a blood that looks like this one, some the cells are kind of attaching. We have some of the cells looking like we have what we call here, you see there's a nickel on this end of the blood cells that indicates that your hormonal imbalance. And if you look in the background of the blood, you will notice there's a lot of debris there, which is also an indication of the growth of microbes inside of your blood. So therefore, it is implicating your health, and it tells a lot that could come in your health. And before we even go any further with this presentation, I then want to, um, I want us to, so I have here a pH, this is strip. This one is a paper strip. We also have a liquid that tests the pH of a few things. Um, so this you could use uh, like a small piece of the strip and you could test the, the, the pH of your saliva when you wake up in the morning to see what your pH is. So that's a very good indicator of where you are. So you will test it to determine, and then you can measure it against the color code that's on here to determine where, where you are, whether it's specific or basic. And the numbers are on there. I think you could get this in a pharmacy or you could buy it online. And this is also a liquid indicator and on this, this liquid indicator, you also have the um, color ranges that tells you whether it's acidic or basic. Now, what I did just now, I got, um, I got some water from the water that you were drinking there. We did like a simple test on it, and then I got some of, I got some water. <laughs> Some distilled water, and we did the test on it, and this is what it, this is what it looks like. So the water that we're drinking is quite acidic, and um, what I found out, I did quite a bit of test on pH. But what I found out is a lot of stuff that we consume or utilize on a daily basis, in the name of health, it is they are extremely acidic. So the water we're drinking is acidic right here. This water is acidic. This distilled water is also very acidic. And the color change when you see it's orange, yellow, you know that it is acidic. And um, this is the water that I, I brought from home from a certain machine that I use. And this, this one is the closest to being alkaline. Um, I was trying to find a couple of stuff that I think might be alkaline, but what I find out is that a lot of stuff that I think, in theory, that is classified as being alkaline, they are very acidic. So, I mean, you have some water there, you want me to test the pH, you else have anything they want us to test. So what we could do is do a little testing on things that you might think is alkaline or basic, and then we can see what we are consuming. So you could drop a little bit in there, and then we put it. Not a lot, not a lot, not a lot. They're good, they're good. <laughs> yeah, so this, no, this is not good. What's this one? This one is the steel or the purified glass? So if you look at it, the water is very yellow or closer to orange, that means the water is acidic. And yeah, both of them are acidic. So we are acidifying our body more so than we are alkalizing our body. So it is very, very critical. See, it looks like urine. Look at it. So we're drinking a lot of acidic water. And 
we are trying to hydrate our system and in a, 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 a lot of you could bring some of that. So a lot of Okay. So a lot of stuff I did I was trying to see if I could find some stuff that are not very theoretically classified as alkaline and I did I did a test on on I tested Okay. So I was trying theoretically to find things that are actually I tested aloe vera. I I I actually did not have the plant itself, but I tested the the gel. I tested the juice and it was really shocking to see how acidic it is. It was extremely shocking because it was at the top of the scale when it comes to acidity. It was not just yellow, it was so such red. So I was like, wow, I thought these things were more on the alkaline side. But, I, uh, well, all of them, because they all combined. Not all, 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 not the amount of um, basic to neutralize the amount of acid that we have in our system. So it is very critical that we transform the pH or our intake of things that are acidic should be actually reduced. I mean, it's okay when we consume things like lemon that we already know is acidic. Those are acidic by nature. So. So those things are acidic by nature, and it is said that when we take them in, they force the bicarbonate production in the stomach, because the stomach is one of the places where, um, where bicarbonates are produced. Just one of the places, the stomach is naturally acidic. It is naturally acidic, but there are bicarbonate production within the stomach in order to help with the neutralization of the acid from the stomach as it goes into the small intestine. So since the, the, the mouth should be alkaline, the stomach acid, and the small intestine, the digestive process that occur within the small intestine is alkaline. The pancreas by far produces the most um, bicarbonate which changes the pH of the lower intestine. And that is what helps to transform the, or helps in the digest, the whole digestive process. Now, we didn't get there yet. I'm kind of jumping ahead of where we get because of what we're talking about. You had a question. Yeah, uh, some people, you know, you said that uh, when you use lemon and water, Oh, that was why. I know you were going to ask that, so I actually answered the question before. Uh, yes, there is a transformation that takes place when you put it in your stomach. Stomach is already acidic, so when you take in um, a lemon juice, as they say, it, it forces the pump to produce bicarbonate within the stomach. Oh. Yes, so that's what I was saying. So it just forces the, yes. the pancreas or the... Not the pancreas, it doesn't get here. It starts in the stomach. Oh. Yes. It so starts it forces the organ to produce... Bicarbonate. It doesn't really start to Right. It was, it's not going to transform in isolation. It is the bicarbonates that are produced that neutralizes it. So and, and because there's bicarbonate produced then, then it becomes neutral and it 
your body also benefits from the bicarbonate that is produced. But that would affect you long run. Well, because we are so acidic on, on, on a larger scale, we are more acidic than alkaline as we see. So what are we drinking is acidic. Or we just want to do the test on the food we're eating in the name of alkalinity, and then we will recognize whether we are acidic or we are alkaline. And that's the next segment. Uh, I just, you know, we know that, we learn that X or Y is alkaline, but a lot of the foods are very acidic, as, as, as I said. Theoretically, they are considered to be alkaline or basic, but when we do the test on them, because of the modi modification on food, they are not necessarily, um, they are not necessarily um, basic as theoretically understood. Okay, so what is acidosis? Now, when your body flows with too much acid, it's known as acidosis. Now, what causes acidosis? It's caused from an overproduction of acid that builds up in the blood or excessive loss of bicarbonate from the blood. Or any buildup of carbon dioxide in the blood that results from poor lung function or depressing, depressed breathing. So anything that is obstructing your breathing or anything in the environment that is preventing you from getting enough oxygen in your system is causing your body to become very acidic. Now we live in an environment where we inhale air that is very toxic. So we have no control over the air in the environment. We don't have any control over the fire taking all the oxygen in the room. We don't have any control over a lot of things, but whatever we have control over, um, we must make a deliberate and intentional effort in order to um, control that, because that is really affecting our health at large. Okay? Now, where does acid come, come from? It comes from metabolism, and just your natural body functions produce acid. Okay? The food we eat and drink, exercise. So exercising also speed up your metabolic rate. And if your metabolic rate is, is um, high, then your body is constantly producing acid. Okay? So even um, thinking, negative thoughts. Yes, as Pastor Cook has been trying to train us not to think negative, to think about the love of God, and be consistent in dwelling on what God has done for us in the past, what he has promised us to do for us. Um, you know, if we can transform our thought process by not looking for negative things in people, then that would also help. Because it's, it's always very difficult, it's just human nature, to see and think, and in most cases, think negative. Okay, now cellular transformation, the breaking down of cells within our body is also another process that also produces acid. Bacteria and yeast, which will pro proliferate in an environment where yeast is... Um, where, where acid is, is, is high, where the, acid, the acidity of the body is high, bacteria, yeast, and all microbes will proliferate in these environments, and the proliferation of those within your body is going to make you sick in the long run. And inflammation is just the holding that also produced a lot of acid. So, and in essence, it's caused from acidity. So in inflammation is caused from acidity, and if you have inflammation, it's going to produce more acid within the body because none of your bodily functions are working properly when your body is acidic or when you have inflammation. High inflammation results in an overworking of the system in order to fix it, 
and it ricochet and consistently ricochet, and we have a sick body. And according to some of the theories, it is one disease, and that disease is primarily stemmed from acidosis. And that's some of the theories from between mucus, and mucus comes from acid. So when we look at things in, in, from the perspective of a natural diagnosis, if you want to call it that, or analysis of our health, we could take many different perspectives and understanding the pH is, is another angle from which we can look at our health and um, balancing the pH, helping to um, fix our health problems. So these are some of the places where acid comes from. Now, cause of acidosis. Okay, so there are two types of acidosis, each with various um, causes. The type of acidosis is categorized as metabolic acidosis and respiratory acidosis. And um, they all stem in different directions. So it's two primary organs that um, are responsible for um, balancing the pH within our body. Two primary organs, and that's the lung and the kidneys. So if those two organs are not functioning optimally, then the pH balance will go out of normal. And when it goes out of normal, it could have serious implication on our health. Okay. Now, so it's very important, and, and that is why exercising becomes such a very critical part of maintaining our health. In the laws of health, it, we talk about exercising, but it becomes, uh, it becomes theoretical more, more so than practical in most of our lives. Uh, we will do everything to eat right, and we could call it so-called eat right because we don't even know the pH of the food we're eating, and um, we're eating or we think we're eating right, but we are not necessarily eating food that is alkalizing our body and that is implicating our health to a great extent. And some of us might say, you know, we, we are really trying to eat healthy, and healthy looks like this. We're not eating meat, we're not eating a lot of grains anymore, we're not, you know, and we cut out and we keep cutting out stuff. But even the things that we bear towards, they are not necessarily helping to balance our pH. And we are even drinking a lot more water. Now, how is that helping us if we are dumping a lot of water in our system, which is not getting across the cell membrane and entering the cells of our body, so we're drinking water, we're running to the bathroom, and we run to the bathroom, but the water is not necessarily hydrating our bodies, and that's what our, our, our big problem is. Okay, so we have respiratory acidosis, and we, we have the types of metabolic and respiratory acidosis, and we we're going to look a little bit at respiratory acidosis. And this occurs when too much carbon dioxide builds up in the body and the lung removes carbon dioxide while you breathe. However, sometimes you can't get rid of enough carbon dioxide. And this may happen due to several different causes. Okay, so there are different things that obstruct the breathing process and those um, will eventually result in respiratory acidosis. This is chronic airway condition like asthma, where the alveoli inside of the lung are collapsing one by one. So they, they look like um, a bunch of grapes on the end of the, the um, bronchial in the lung, and once they start collapsing because of different reasons, sometimes it's mucus buildup, the buildup of mucus it will prevent, hamper the exchange of, 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 of carbon dioxide for oxygen. So breathing is obstructed when this is concerned. So um, obesity, some people are so obese 
they are moderately obese, they are about to explode, and this can prevent them from breathing properly. So it's a lot of fat that they are carrying around and they can't breathe. I don't know if you have ever experienced anyone walking up, but it's not even just walking up stairs, it's just walking generally. Just to get up and move from over here to there, their, their breathing is extremely heavy. So that results from being obese and that can obstruct the breathing process and that also ricochet into not enough oxygen going into the system, the body becomes extremely acidic, and then you suffer from um, respiratory acidosis. And overuse of alcohol, I don't think any of us here are using any alcoholic thing except that we're using this lotion that's loaded with alcohol. Sometimes you feel drunk when you put them on if you really, really care, carefully notice. If you're using a lotion, you must read the label to make sure that it doesn't have any ethylene or all of that in there because a lot of times you put them on, they have a lot of alcohol based in there. So that's something that we need so that we don't take in excess of this alcohol in our system because our skin is the largest organ and when we rub our skin all over with, you know, these, um, Skin moisturizer, this is what happened. It goes right into our bloodstream and it could also contribute towards our body become, becoming acid, acidic. Muscle weakness in the chest is also another problem. So if you have a chest problem, the diaphragm is not working. Any of those parts is not working properly, it's going to affect the amount of oxygen that reaches into the system and the amount of carbon dioxide that leaves the system. Problem with the nervous system because the nervous system also helps to regulate the, it regulates the, the breathing process. It's uh, auto, autonomic, it just automatically regulates it. And that's, we don't think about our breathing. We just breathe. And if we were to really understand how the Lord has made us so wonderfully, then we would appreciate life a little bit more. Okay, so that's respiratory acidosis. And then we have metabolic acidosis. So metabolic acidosis starts in the kidneys. And instead of the, instead of um, in the lungs, it occurs when they can't eliminate enough acid because we produce tons and tons of acid from the food that we eat. So the kidneys has that trouble of eliminating. So our, our primary waste comes from the kidneys. And this is the waste that we, the things we digest. Because it has to get into our blood cells in order for it to be considered um, waste from the body, like or sweat, that is waste. Waste comes from the kidneys, and the, whatever comes out of the kidney goes through the blood, or gets into the, it is it's a part of our, our blood vessels that get into the system. So it has to get into the blood cells, and then the blood cells pass through the kidneys, and it, um, um, it filters it, and whatever it filters it passes up. So it occurs when we can't eliminate the acid, and that builds up into our system, and it becomes metabolic acidosis. And then we have three types. We have diabetic acid acidosis, and it occurs in people with diabetes. Um, that's poorly controlled. So if you're diabetic and it's poorly controlled, then then it will result in this um, type of acidosis. If your body lacks enough insulin, ketones build up into your body and acidify your blood. Now high ketones in ketone level in urine may indicate um, diabetic um, diabetic ketoacidosis, ketoacidosis, okay. um, popular name as DAK. And this is a complication of diabetes that can lead to coma, even death. Okay, so we must be conscious of 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 um, these, and I felt like it was um, important for us to 
understand what ketones are and are uh, everyone. Based on the research I have done, has ketones, whether you have diabetes or not, they are there. And they are chemicals that are made in your liver. Okay, and you have them being produced when you don't have enough insulin in your blood, as you said. It, it, insulin in your body to turn sugar to glucose, which gives you energy. So you need another source so your body uses fat instead. People go on the ketone diet where they don't use any form of starch in their diet. They predominantly con um, consume um, fat or muscles of meat or just meat, so they are not eating any form of starch, and that and that will cause the body to you know find another way to maintain homeostasis. Because regardless of what you do, your body needs energy to the work so it converts the fat that is stored in the liver to give you energy and you've heard that experience. Okay? So when you have when you have that diabetes or whatever, you can build up too many ketones in your blood and too many ketones ketones can become life threatening. Okay? Now we also have another type of acidosis, which is hyperprolemic acidosis, which results from a loss of um, a loss of bicarb sodium bicarbonate, and this this helps to keep the blood neutral. And when we have hyperchloremia acidosis, um, you know diarrhea, vomiting can cause it because we are losing now. I just want to mention a little bit about sodium bicarbonate. Um, it, is, it is secreted within the body naturally. And um, as I have said before, the pancreas, which produced quite a bit of the enzyme that is used in the final process of digestion, um, produced quite a bit of sodium bicarbonate. And when the pancreas is not working proper, properly as we talk about the diabetic acidosis, then we don't have enough sodium bicarbonate that is released so the digestive process does not occur um, as it should normally. So the bicarbonate helps neutralize some acid generated during the digestive process and breaks down certain enzymes, okay? So one of the one of the very important things about sodium bicarbonate, it is produced within the body, and you could also access it outside. You could buy sodium bicarbonate, and that could also help to neutralize some of the acid that we have in our system. But it's not something that we can, we want to take on a daily basis every day because we don't want to, we don't want to build up or um, basic or, or bicarbonate level too high either. When we, when they're doing dialysis, it's one of the substances that they use in the process to help to jumpstart the functioning of the kidney. So for people who are about to go on dialysis or are um, having kidney issues and they're trying to reset their system to um, enable efficient functioning of the kidneys, um, sodium bicarbonate is one of the suggested things that some people use that help in the past. Um, I understand they use it in the hospital. My sister tell me if, if she's working all night and she don't want a patient to die on her so that she has to deal with it. <laughs> sodium bicarbonate is one of the things that they give, she gives to them to keep them alive because she works in ICU because she don't want to deal with paperwork, she don't want to deal with that, so she would actually use that as a part of their their IV to keep them alive so she could go home and they die when she's not. <laughs> it, it must have some value attached to it. it. It is present in all body fluid, and as I said, the stomach produces some sodium bicarbonate, and the pancreas produces a large amount of it. And that is why it's so critical to to have or to take care of our pancreas. 
in the best way that we can possibly do. And um, in our next segment, what we will do, we will look at, you know, how it implicates our health to a great extent and what we will need to do. And what we will continue to do is to do more tests on different things that we consume. Okay. So the stomach lining also, as I said before, produce some bicarbonate to help cushion the effect of the acid of the stomach, um, uh, the acid in the stomach on the stomach lining. There is mucus, but there is also sodium bicarbonate that is produced that helps to cushion that, and it starts the neutralizing process of the acid because. I had watched one video clip on where one doctor, I think it's Robert Young, he is a, his theory, which he says in, in his video clip, that the stomach is one of the major parts of the digestive system that helps to um, neutralize acid, even though acid is the primary, the hydrochloric acid primary thing that's in the stomach, if he was talking about the buffering effect of the um, hydrochloric acid and how the, the stomach produced a large amount of the, the sodium bicarbonate more than what is recorded in research over the years. Now, I, I was trying to see more and more of, I try to understand his theory a little bit better, but I didn't get enough data on it. So I'm still doing the research to really get to the bottom of what he found out in his personal research with clients that he has dealt with. So um, the next time maybe I'll have some more information on his research talking about the stomach because his theory is that the stomach helps to neutralize the entire body, the pH of the entire body, so that the body stays at a normal pH. And he is renowned because he, is, he has done quite a bit of work on reversing type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, which, you know, in most cases I've not heard of too many people who, who, who um, are able to work on reversing type 1 diabetes. Type 2 is pretty easy, but type 1 is very difficult. And I'm pretty sure the bicarbonate level produced by the pancreas, what he found out, it could be of serious benefit to all of us to really understand how that works and see what he does to, um, to, to reverse all of this. Now, and then the next one is lactic acid. Um, lactic acid. Lactic acidosis. And um, this is, okay, so lactic acid is in our body and it can be built up when we take in too much alcohol, when we over exercise, when we have heart failure, cancer, seizures, um, or liver failure, and prolonged lack of oxygen and low blood sugar. So over exercising build up that and there are people who get cramps, muscle spasm, stuff like that. And all of that is as a result of lactic acid build up in the system. And um, all of this occur as a result of an excess acid in our body to start. <clears throat> and I felt like you might want to know what is lactic acid. So it's a colorless syrup, um, organ, um, organic acid found in, in sour milk and produced in muscle tissues during strenuous exercise. And not just then when there's a lot of stress on the body as you see. In the cases prior to this that was presented, we have a liver, liver failure. It's going to put a lot of stress on the body. Or any ex um, stressful condition is going to cause spasm in muscle in various parts of the body, and that will cause, you know, the buildup of lactic acid. Um, now, maintaining acid-based balance is very critical. Um, it, and as I said, we mentioned it is controlled by the lungs, the kidneys, 
and there are other buffers that are produced and it can be disrupted by vomiting, diarrhea, respiratory failure, kidney failure, and infection, and um, the things we ingest. Okay, now this is something that I would love for, to challenge you guys to actually do. It is critical for us to know what our pH is. So that would help us to make an effort to transform that pH because in transforming the pH of our body, it's going to help us to actually become more healthy. And, and that's something that we should be intentionally trying to do. And um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's, I think this is probably the easiest one to get the pH strip. And it's easier to work with. It's long term. It has a lot on it. So you could use this for many, many, many. You could use this for almost a year without finishing it. You know, the spurt from, from inside of it. Um, you I bought these online. So what would be good if you could, you know, we're going to start with testing what our pH is right now. I need for everybody to just get a little piece of it so we could um, start testing our pH once the distribution is going. So we're going to test our pH to see where we are. So everybody get a little piece and you just test your saliva. See, yeah, what is your pH? And usually, ideally, we do this in the morning. We do it in the afternoon. And, and we do it at night. And we do both our saliva and our urine. And that will give us an indication of what the pH is in our body. Okay, what not to eat? And I think we kind of know this, but what I really want us to do is to do some research on what is what is what is actually basic in pH. I know there are a lot of foods that is considered basic. Basic meaning alkaline. Yes. Basic meaning alkaline. <coughs> just, test, just take it out and then we're going to look at it. You don't even have to keep it for long. And then you could look at, use the, the paper. This paper will give you an idea. And if you measure it against it, so you can see if you're neutral, if you're acidic, where, where are you? Oh, that's not so bad. Six is not so bad. Yeah, so we could pass the paper around. Oh, yeah, that's it. I mean, no, not too bad. It doesn't matter where it's the saliva. The saliva that's going to wet it and it's coming from your body. It's coming from your body fluid. Then you just wet it. So it's going to change. So we could pass that around and then we will see if we're acidic or basic. Once it, tur it turns green, I think pasta cuckoo is very acidic. Where is he? What I want us to do is to research. I want us to actually do this research to figure out what is really acidic, what is basic. In terms. Yeah. He is what? Did he test his pH? Oh, she is like outline. She's crazy. Okay, that's great. So the ladies are basic and the male are acidic. Okay. 
That's the cocoa one to see at PA. Okay, so we are going to, we're going to just go over this slide and then, um, So this is the last slide that we're going to run over, and then we could, you know, talk after that. Now, according to Robert Young, he said acid is the disease. All disease actually. Okay? Alkaline is the alkalization is the cure for everything. Okay? And this is his theory. Okay? Um, and Robert Young, New Biology, most simply state that the over acidification of the body is the single underlying cause of disease. There is no such thing as a cancer cell. A cancer cell was once a healthy cell that has been spoiled by acid. The tumor is not the problem but the solution to protect healthy cells and tissue from being spoiled from other rotten cells and tissue. Like one, one bad apple in the batch will spoil all the others. So, what we're going to try to do as our goal is to neutralize our our blood so that we could have our blood cells looking like this, and this is going to transform everything. Because if your blood looks like this, then you're going to be making healthy organs, you're going to have a healthy life, and you will be healthy at the end of the day. Because if it looks like this, it means that your body is alkaline. Because um, the real cause is, it says wherever the acid goes, if not eliminated, where the tissue is where the tissue breaks down. So if it goes to the breast, the brain, the knees, the liver, or the spleen, that's what, that's where the breaking down will occur, and that's where your disease actually starts. So the al alkalizing the system is is crucial, critical, and um, this is going to be my final slide until we take it up in part two, where we will talk about. Um, the implication of this on our health and look at specific disorders and how alkalizing the system will help with um, curing the disorders that we will come up with on a daily basis or will come up on us on a daily basis as, as a result of our done for. So we will end with this one asking the Lord to help us so that we can actually implement what we need to implement. And first of all, we also need to find out what actually is basic food so that we can know what to consume, which will maintain our health. We're going to pray to close. Mm -hmm. um, so is it best to drink alkaline water? Well, I would recommend drinking alkaline water if our body is acidic and it is everything that or 90% of what we consume. That's why I was saying it is, it is what we need to do is to do research and to find out what actually is because there's a lot of things that we consume that theoretically is, is basic, but in actuality it is not. Especially, I look at things like um, aloes, mm -hmm. and when you do the pH test on aloes, it is skyrocketingly acidic. Mm -hmm. Now, we're consuming these in the name of balancing our pH. Mm -hmm. Now, drinking, drinking um, alkaline water is probably among the few things that you would drink.